Your housekeeper left me here, and I hope I'm not disturbing you. I'm Richard Allen. You're not disturbing us in the least, Mr. Allen. Sit down. How may we be of assistance? Uh, my brother, uh, Courtney Allen, is, uh, that is, was, the president of the Grant Arms Company. Found shot to death in the alley behind his office on the evening of March 9th. My condolences. Thank you. It, it was all so terribly tragic. Scotland Yard put it down as a simple robbery by person or persons unknown. But I don't believe it, and that's why I'm here. Mr. Holmes, will you please take on this case? It has some interesting elements. Uh, tell me, Mr. Allen, what sort of man was your brother? Uh, Courtney was a dynamic, charismatic individual. Always busy, forever on the move. Oh, I knew a chap like that in the service. He's quite a charmer with the ladies. Yes, and so was Courtney. No woman could resist him. Wasn't your brother married? Uh, yes. Poor Beatrice. Uh, then I take it he had other romantic involvements at the time of his death? Well, yes, I believe he did, but I haven't a clue as to the lady or ladies in question might have been. With your brother dead, who has assumed the presidency? Well, Courtney's handpicked successor, Philip Marlowe, the second vice president. Doesn't that sort of transfer of power usually go to the senior vice president? Well, usually. But the senior vice president is Lord Raglan, who runs the Double Ross Street plant. Now, he's a brilliant technician, but a, a most inept businessman. Who inherited your brother's stock? His wife, Beatrice. It's also very upsetting. There, there, Mr. Allen. I assume those are the personal effects found with your brother? There wasn't much. A few folders, his keychain, his gold wedding band, and a small notebook. I did notice, however, that his pocket watch was missing. Anything of interest, Mr. Holmes? They appear to be of a primarily personal nature. Hmm. This one is empty. What does SP-10 indicate, Mr. Allen? I, I haven't a notion. There are two entries on the day of your brother's death. Captain Egan, 8.30 p.m. The other entry is Plant, 8 a.m. Surprise. There also appears to be a note stuck in the back of the book. Written in your brother's hand. It says, meet me tonight at Spaniards at 10 o'clock followed by the initials A.M. Spaniards. I positively salivate over their paella. Yes, it is very good indeed. Thank you, Mr. Allen. I think we have enough to begin our investigation. We're sorry to inconvenience you, Mr. Camp, but we need to ask you a few questions. <clears throat> Excuse me, beastly cold. Of course, I'd be happy to help. What would you like to know? Specifically, why you were removed from Project 10. Our Lord Raglan simply assigned me elsewhere. Since Project Number 10 was well along, he felt I might be more useful in other areas. Is that all he told you? Well, he also mentioned that my visits to the French Embassy had been misinterpreted in some quarters. What brings you to the embassy so frequently? I am secretly engaged to Annette Zobar, daughter of the vice Council. Lovely girl. Unfortunately, her father, Paul Zobar, is not awfully fond of me. Her uncle, Emile, however, is sympathetic to us. Since I work for an arms company and he is the military attaché, my visits there are ostensibly to see him. Have you ever discussed Project 10 with Monsieur Zobar? Oh, no, I would never. <coughs> <coughs> you should cut back on your smoking until you are well. But I don't smoke. Then to whom do these belong? Oh, I bought those as a birthday gift to Emile Zobar. Burns and Hill are his favorite.
Eight months ago, Allen came to this office with the design for the revolutionary new naval gun, most secret. The design was approved by the Navy. What about the meeting you had planned with Mr. Allen for the evening of March 9th? He never appeared, but you probably already know that. Quite. Actually, I knew nothing of what we were to discuss, but I've kept the wire he sent me that morning. Meet tonight, 8.30, your office. Call out the guard, pounce at 10. Quite vague, don't you think? Does it mean anything to you, Captain Egan? I think Alan was worried about security for project number 10. Of course, I put some of my best men on it right away. Did you come up with anything? Richard Camp, the development engineer on project number 10, was discovered bringing boxes and bundles to the French embassy. Emile Zobar, French military attaché, has his office there. So you think Mr. Allen had information implicating Camp in a security breach of Project 10? I did. Still do. But Lord Ragland, head of the project, assured me that Allen's security fears were unfounded. You've spoken with Ragland since Allen's death? Yes, we met on March 11th. As a precaution, he assured me he would remove Camp from the project. Can you think of anyone else who might pose a security risk to the project? Yes. For now, I have my men investigating Zobar, Van Schulenberg, Delgera, and Meskov. Their governments would all have great interest in our new gun. And what have you uncovered so far? Unfortunately, nothing. Yet. Mr. Lindhart, I understand Mr. Allen was scheduled to meet with Captain Egan at 8.30. Oh, yes. Egan's the artillery officer for the Admiralty. I saw him leave for the meeting around 8. He said good night and went out to the back door to the alley where he always leaves to catch a cab. Do you know what the meeting was about? Not that particular meeting. But Mr. Allen and Captain Egan did meet often to discuss the progress of their new special project, Project 10. I did find it curious that the meeting on the 9th was scheduled for the evening. All the others occurred during the day. I imagine a person in his position must have been extremely concerned about security. Indeed he was. He called in Lord Ragland after he noticed several strange people hanging around the Deverell Street plant. All the technical data, blueprints, that sort of thing are housed there. I see. I understand you are now secretary to the new president, Mr. Marlowe. Yes. He was Mr. Allen's hand-picked successor, which perfectly illustrates the type of man Mr. Allen was. What do you mean? Only that there was no love loss between them, and yet recognizing Marlowe's outstanding business skills, he named him as his heir, so to speak. Sorry, Lord Raglan isn't available at the moment. Perhaps I can help you. I'm his assistant, Walter Kehoe. Mr. Kehoe, can you tell me anything about Mr. Allen's visit here on the morning of March 9th? He came to see Lord Raglan, but he weren't here. Do you know the purpose of his visit? No, I wouldn't be knowing their business. But it was most likely about special project number 10. It being secret and all. And when did Lord Raglan finally arrive? He never did. So then did Mr. Allen leave? Not straight away. He said he had some details to attend to. I went back to the plant, and about a quarter of an hour later, Mr. Allen calls me and hands me a note. Says it came for Lord Raglan while I was down on the line. He wanted to make sure I got it to him. He also said I shouldn't mention his visit. I'd appreciate it if you'd take me to someone who could shed some light on Special Project 10. Well, that would be Richard Camp. But he left early today. He wasn't feeling well. Uh, 
I'm surprised you're wasting your time on this one, Holmes. It was a simple robbery. We found Alan dead in an alley behind Grant Arms. Wallet empty, gold watch missing, briefcase open, contents askew but not stolen. It's an open and shut case. Was there anything else found at the scene that could be of use to us, Inspector? I doubt it. Nothing but a couple of tin cans and an old cigarette butt. Hmm. B and H. What does that mean? You don't know? Why, then, I must assume you also do not know why the end is evenly pinched all round. Perhaps you should read my monograph on the subject of 100 most commonly found cigarette butts. Would you care for a cigarette? They're Burns and Hills Imperials. A wonderful smoke. Thank you, no. <laughs> you really shouldn't be smoking in your condition. It is nothing, just a little bit of a cold. <laughs> Tell me, Monsieur Zobar, where were you on the evening of March 9th? Ah, oh, yes. That was the night of Monsieur Allen's death. I was at Simpson's, beating the pants off of Alfie, the so-called chess champion. <laughs> Are you acquainted with a Mr. Richard Camp? Oh, but of course. He's employed at Grant Arms Company, and he's secretly engaged to my beautiful niece, Annette. Why must the lovebirds be so secretive? Uh, because uh, my brother, uh, Annette's father, has an inexplicable dislike for the English. And you, Monsieur Zobar, do you share your brother's feeling? Oh, mon Dieu, no. I admire you English very much. Has Mr. Camp ever spoken with you about the special project on which he was working for Grant? Oh, never. Nor would I ever ask him about such a confidential matter. He has a profound sense of loyalty. That's why I admire him so much. Hear ye, hear ye. The Queen's Court stands in order. So it's you again. Well, it's always a pleasure to have this court graced with your presence. So I see you're here to solve the murder of Court May Allen. But weren't satisfied with Scotland Yard's robbery theory, I see. All right then. Who murdered Court May Allen? Uh, remember, you're to choose from either your notebook or the directory. How right you are! Good work! Now, tell the court, if you will, why Courtney Allen was murdered. Good show! Now tell me, what was the significance of Special Project SP-10? By George, I think you've got it. Now tell us, if you can, what transpired at Spaniards Inn. Yes, you've got it. Now tell us, what was Richard Camp actually doing during his numerous visits to the French Embassy? Fine detective work. Now for your final question. A cigarette was found at the scene of the crime. Why, pray tell, was it pinched evenly all around?
Excellent job. You've solved the case to my satisfaction. Court is recessed. Until the next time, of course. An extremely difficult case, and your score is absolutely perfect. I'm quite sure we could not have done any better. Oh, Dragland. Most shocking, isn't it? I must commend you for following your instincts, Mr. Allen. Because you doubted Scotland Yard's original findings regarding your brother's death, we were able to catch the murderer. But tell me, Mr. Holmes, how did you solve this case? In the first place, I found it unlikely that a common criminal would have overlooked a valuable gold ring. In the second place, a simple robbery would not explain the missing contents of the SP-10 folder. Those documents were central to the murder. It then became a simple matter to cull two suspects from the customer list of Burns and Hill Imperial brand smokers. Burns and Hill? But that was the branded cigarette found at the scene, and the list we obtained had quite a few names. It was fascinating to see the way Holmes narrowed it down. You flattered me, Watson. It was nothing, really. In the first place, I knew the murderer had to be someone aware of Courtney Allen's habit of exiting his office via the alleyway. That made the most likely suspect a co-worker. Of the gentlemen on the list, only Lord Ragland and Richard Camp fit that category. But how did you narrow it down to Ragland? Elementary, Mr. Allen. Mr. Camp does not smoke. He purchased the cigarettes as a present for Emile Zobar. But why did Raglan do it? After learning of your brother's surprise visit to the plant, Raglan knew the proverbial jig was up. He realized Courtney had removed the plans for Project 10 from the safe, the very same plans he had intended to sell that night to the Russian attaché. The only solution was to kill your brother and reclaim the plans. Case closed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Now, Courtney may no longer be with us. But it does serve as a small consolation to know that his murderer will get his due. Indeed. And we may all rest more easily knowing that England will suffer no more breaches of security at the hands of that traitor. Isn't that so, Holmes? Quite. Quite.